Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns. Is anybody else besides me fed up with all the men requests on Facebook? They all tend to be scammers or God knows what they're looking for. Well, I've decided now I'm going to start messing with them. I'm going to have a little bit of fun. Um, first of all, I put up a post this afternoon that uh, all the strange men, when they send a friend request, only serious ones I will confirm will be those who will send a picture of themselves with a spatula in their left hand while spanking their right buttock. Only serious friend requests, please. Now I've also gone to the point of, okay, when they say, well, I'd like to get to know you a little bit better, can, can we talk? Okay, fine. Send me a picture of. And I have them do absolutely ridiculous things. Scammers don't send back photos because they've stolen somebody else's photo. I've only had one person send back an actual photo that I requested of them. And, uh, yeah, he seems to be a legitimate fellow. We're just talking having a good time getting to know each other. And he's not looking for anything other than a friend, which is fine with me, because that's all I'm looking for. Just fed up. You know what I mean, guys? It's just, it gets ridiculous, some of these guys. All right, but you didn't come here to hear that, did you? No, you didn't. Okay. I have been working on my, um spring garden shawl. Let me make sure I have it on the right side. And I believe that is the right side. I have been working on this shawl for a little while. And, um, did I put any stitch markers in it? Yeah. This is where I was the other day when I stopped. And I've gotten a few more rows. And yes, this is in the Blueberry Swirl by Premier Yarns. Can't remember the name of it. You know, it's one of those cakes. So anyway, I had I have like eight cakes of this stuff. So, you know, I'm using it, trying to get rid of it. So anyway, that's where I am with that shawl. And I am working on it. Getting it done as quickly as I can. Just because I feel like doing it. You know? Now, <clears throat> one other thing that I've been doing is I have been working on the afghan. And this is just plain old granny stitch afghan. And that is this one that I've been doing out of the Garen Simply Soft colors that I have. Which I have quite a few colors. And um, this is where I picked it up again. Started crocheting. Only have a couple more rows of it. And I'm just trying to get rid of, you know, their partial skeins. So I thought I would work and get rid of those. Now, I did get a finished item. And I'm going to show you this again. If you saw the shop update, you've already seen it. But I'm going to show you it again. And that is my, um, Summer Crossing Shawl. It is finished. Like I said, it will be going to the Prayer Shawl Ministry. Now, today is the last day for you to send pictures into the Facebook group, Scraptastic Yarns, or to send me photos on at Scraptastic Yarns at Gmail. Um, I am giving away a prize, and that prize is a tote bag that I have made. And I'm going to show you that tote bag. And I will be pulling the winner tomorrow morning before I leave for Bible study. And hopefully, I can get the video up. Otherwise, you know, it'll be up later that day. Anyway, this is the tote that I made. It's a little bit bigger than normal. It's probably about 16 by 16. Um, there is a pocket in the front. 
and I chose to use the purple for the front and it's got the flowers on the inside. There is a slip pocket on the inside which is, oh, got to trim that thread. Which I used the purple on the inside and then the flower for the pocket on the inside. And this tote will be going to whoever wins that. Um, you do not have to have it finished. It can be partial. You could have just started it, whatever, to put your name in for the drawing. I may include something else besides that. Don't know yet. Um, but yeah, that is going to be the prize for that um, crochet long. That's, that's it, folks. Jeez, talk about going by fast. Got a lot to do. <laughs> um, it just seems like I don't have time to do a lot of things that I've been wanting to do. So, um, you know, I'm trying to catch up with a lot of things. And like I said, I'm still, now I'm pulling Christmas fabrics to start working on Christmas bags. And, and, uh, that's interesting. I didn't realize I had that much Christmas fabric. So, uh, yeah. Finding out I have more fabric than I thought I did. And other than that, I've been working on the outside of the house a little bit here and there. Um, their landscaping has not started. It's probably not going to start until next year. Spring, maybe. I don't know. Um, but I have a lot of things that I need to take care of out here in the back. Um, trying to get rid of that uh, barnyard grass. And my weasel heck, comes back every night. Um, comes back by to sit on the wall. I don't know what it's doing back there on that retaining wall. But it sits back there. Now at the end I'll show you every night I do have, well every evening, I do have visitors and quite often, sometimes during the day about midday they'll show up as well. But usually it's about 5 o'clock that they start showing up. Um, it's a mother and three fawns. They come by and um, they kind of graze a little. and I've got that one fawn that uh, he's a rather interesting fawn because... He's nosy as all get out. He gets as close to this retaining wall as he can um, to look in, see what I'm doing while I'm sewing. But the minute I move, he takes off. I mean, right. Battery died. Sorry about that, guys. You know, by now, you would think that he knows that I'm in here and that I'm doing something and that I'm going to move, but it still startles him. Um, the other night I was woke up by, and I'm not real sure what it was, about 3 a.m. And it was a really odd cry, almost like a scream. Now I've heard rabbits being killed, and it didn't sound like rabbit howling when they're being killed. But it was really high-pitched. I don't think there are elk in the area. I mean, nobody's ever talked about seeing elk around here. I mean, I'm sure it's quite possible. So maybe it was a deer, you know. It's rutting season, so who knows what kind of noises it make. All right, are you ready for a little what incarnation? Okay. 104-year-old skydiver might be the world's oldest. Skydiving business in Chicago said it's seeking to have a 104-year-old jumper recognized as the oldest person to go tandem skydiving. Skydive Chicago said Dorothy Hoffner, 104, took a tandem jump Sunday in Ottawa, Illinois, official, unofficially breaking the world record set by 103-year-old Swedish skydiver Ruth Larson in 2022. Skydive Chicago shared a video to Facebook showing Hoffner and her tandem partner being greeted in the landing zone by a cheering crowd. The business said it is submitting evidence of Hoffner's attempt to Guinness World Records for official recognition. That's pretty cool. You know, 
When I go thrift store shopping, I don't ever find things like this. I kind of wish I would. $2,000 sculpture bought for $39.99 at an Alabama thrift store. Shopper at a Goodwill thrift store in Alabama. 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 <laughs> Maybe I'm tired today. Thrift store in Alabama bought a flower sculpture for $39.99. It is now being put up for auction with a starting price of $2,000. Shannon meant they said she was at the thrift store on Green Springs Highway in Birmingham when she spotted the sculpture of a magnolia flower magnolia, magnolia flower and branch that she immediately recognized as a work of Frank Fleming, the artist who created Birmingham's Storyteller Fountain. She found the piece was signed by Fleming, who died in 2018. So she bought the sculpture for $39.99, but she said she was sure it was worth far more. She decided to donate the piece to the Birmingham Zoo's annual gala auction. The unique sculpture with a rich green patina captures the magnolia flower in full bloom, the auction description reads. Fleming primarily worked with bronze, a material that allowed him to capture the fine details of his subjects while also ensuring the longevity of his sculptures. Bidding for the sculpture starts at $2,000. Bidding closes October the 5th. Yep. As you know, links are down below in case you want to bid. Miniature horse found wandering loose in North Carolina neighborhood. A miniature horse escaped from its owner's home in North Carolina and was found snacking on plants outside a neighbor's home. The Durham Police Department posted a photo to Facebook showing the small equine found wandering loose in the Brit Street area. Is this your horse? This little one decided to horse around the 3600 3, block of Brit Street this morning snacking at houses, the post said. Police said they were later able to find the horse's owner and return the animal to its home. I'm sure you've all seen this story around, but come on, it's still kind of interesting. Especially when you see the video. Emotional support alligator barred from attending Phillies game. Good call, Phillies. A Pennsylvania man was unable to attend the game between the Philadelphia Phillies and the Pittsburgh Pirates when stadium security turned away his emotional support animal, an alligator. Joey Henney, a former hunting and fishing TV host, appeared on networks including ESPN Outdoors, has had Wally the Gator for about seven years. He had the unusually gentle reptile less licensed as an emotional support animal while he was undergoing chemotherapy treatments. Brave fella. Henny said Wally's visits to schools, hospitals, and assisted living facilities caught the attention of the Phillies, who invited him to bring his pet to meet members of the team and their partners before Wednesday's game. And he said he and Wally arrived at the stadium too late for the meetup as the players were already warming up on the field. So he bought tickets and Wally has been into other baseball games, so he assumed that it was okay, Henning told CNN. We never asked or checked with it, but they only allow service animals, such as dogs and horses, into the stadium, not emotional support assisted animals. And he said he was disappointed, but he understood being turned away by security at Citizens Bank Park. When they came and told us, there was no disagreement, there was no arguing, there was no conflict at all. It was all good, he said. They've got their rules, and we've got to go by their rules. I can't go there and make my rules. The rules for Citizens Bank Park State certified service dogs or service dogs in training for guests with special needs are welcome. All other animals are prohibited. 
and he said he is hoping to schedule another meetup with the team members in the future. The exotic pet owner and longtime rep reptile rescuer said Wally has always had a very mild temperament. Wally has been quite different than any alligator I've ever dealt with in the past 30 years, he said. He doesn't show anger. He doesn't show aggression. He hasn't since the day he was caught. We never could understand why. And who knows? Maybe he realizes he's got it good. Entangled elk rescued from TV cables in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania game warden came to the rescue of an elk that ended up with his antlers entangled in TV cables. The Pennsylvania Game Commission said game wardens responded to a report of an elk in Cinnamahoning with its antlers caught in a telecommunication wire that was wrapped around a utility pole and a nearby tree. The bull was sedated and then the bull's vitals were monitored while the wire was cut free from its antlers, the Pennsylvania Game Commission said in a Facebook post. A GPS collar was fitted to the bull to monitor future movements and ensure his health after such a stressful event. The elk was then given a drug to reverse his sedative. The animal did not appear to be injured and was released at the scene. It's not uncommon for elk to become entangled in loose items, especially this time of year. Severe cases like this would ultimately end in an agonizing death for the animal without intervention, the post said. Now you remember last week I told you about the Hambone Award for Nationwide Insurance Claims? We have a winner. Cat folded in the sofa bed wins Hambone Award for Unusual Insurance Claims. Nationwide Pet Insurance announced a New York cat who ended up folded up in a sofa bed was awarded the Hambone Award for the most unusual pet insurance claim of the year. Nationwide said the 15th annual Hambone Award, named in honor of a dog who ate a hand dyer ham while trapped in a refrigerator, was awarded to a cat named Giles. Giles' owners, Reed and Caitlin, said the cat was under the sofa bed when Reed's stepmother folded it back into the couch. Giles, like the rest of the finalists for the award, fully recovered from his injuries. Giles' predicament shows just how easily an ordinary situation can become precarious for a pet. Jules Benson, Vice President of Pet Health and Chief Veterinary Officer for Nationwide, said in a news release, We're so glad that the quick actions of the Giles family and their veterinary care team set him up for a speedy recovery. Giles and his owners were presented with the Hambone Award trophy, a gift card, and a donation to be made in the feline's name to an approved pet-related charity of the family's choice. So there you have it. We have a winner. And the video is quite interesting. I mean, the family has rules regarding Giles. And still, an accident happened. Alright, that is it for today. Let's get into our devotional for today. October the 3rd. Now, I'm telling you, I am videoing this October the 2nd in the evening. That's why there, no winner has been chosen for that bag. October the 3rd, Songs of Victory. You are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me. You surround me with songs of victory. Psalm 32, verse 7, the New Living Translation. Life can feel like a battle sometimes, from keeping up with busy schedules to making major decisions. We are met with challenges daily. Some days we just want to hide away for a while so we can recharge and refocus. God is our hiding place, our protection, and our rest. He walks with us through the battles of life and sings a song of victory over us.
With Christ as our strength, we can not only make it through the battle, we can come out as joyful victors. What do you need God to help you give you victory in today? All right, guys, that is it for today's podcast or video. I guess it's not a podcast anymore. As always, be kind to one another, love one another, get out there and see this big, beautiful world we live in. And uh, I'm going to put a little bit of footage of the deer here behind. Other than that, get in touch with God, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.